Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave next to my lovely mill. Uh, and I've talked a lot over the course of these videos on Tested about how much I love the milling machine in general, how much I love this milling machine uh, specifically. I bought this at the end of 2020 uh, and it came in here in, I think, March of 21. Uh, and it has radically improved my machining. Um, it is a lovely machine. This is a sharp knee mill based off the uh, 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 Bridgeport mill design. Many of the parts between Bridgeports and this machine are interchangeable. Um, and <clears throat> there are so many, th look, a lot of people walk in and they see the mill and they're like, it looks like a big drill press. And it is, in fact, a big drill press. And you can put a drill in it and just like a drill press, you can draw this down and move the quill and drill stuff. What it has as an advantage over a drill press is instead of the, um, instead of, hang on. Instead of just this four inch post, sorry, instead of this four inch post holding the whole thing together in orientation, instead, what a milling machine has is thousands of pounds of cast iron over here. Um, it's an incredibly rigid structure, and that means you can do highly precise things. And uh, in many ways, you can do them really quickly. And I mean, you know, if society collapsed, this is one of the machines you would use to rebuild um, chunks of the engineering of society. Um, however, there are operations that, while they are easy to do on the mill, can be boringly time consuming, and thus, um, Look, I just find sometimes time consuming or super tedious tasks on machines can um, make you resist going towards those solutions as mechanical solutions. And I want to talk about one. Okay, so many times in engineering and building of things, uh, I end up with a couple of plates that I want to be able to screw together. So let's say that this plate mounts to the wall or something, and then this plate mounts to the machine that I am building. And I want a set of registration holes between these two plates. So I'd have threaded holes, chamfered threaded holes in this plate, and through holes uh, put in this plate. That is, if I had to do that, if I had to put eight holes around the perimeter of this, there are, there are multiple tools that I need to do that. Um, first off, let's just walk through the tools you would need to drill to drill and tap one plate and to make through holes and countersunks for the other plate. First, uh, so I'm, let's say I'm gonna do a uh, quarter 20 bolts. Um, I need a number seven drill, that's the first one. And I drill eight holes with a quarter 20 drill. Then, sorry, with the number seven drill. Then I'd use a quarter 20 spiral point and I would tap all eight of those holes. Then I would take a, hold on. Oh, actually, mm, again, yeah. hold on, I get ahead of myself. First, I would uh, center drill spot all eight holes. That's one bit. Then I would use a number seven drill. That's a second. Then I would use a quarter 20 spiral point. That's a third. Then I would use a chamfer mm -hmm, to, uh, to chamfer the edges. That's a fourth. Then there's the through hole. That's a fifth. And then there's the countersink for the through hole, like one of these for cap head screws, that's a sixth. And then perhaps one more chamfer, that's a seven. So in order to get these eight holes, that is seven potential bit changes times 16 holes. 112 separate operations. Um, it can eat up a lot of time for something so simple. Okay, so why is 112 operations such a pain in the butt? Well, partly is because all of these bits in my hand have different diameters, which means every single one needs a different collet to fit into the spindle of my mill. So that means that for each hole, I am sometimes changing out five different collets, or am I doing seven passes of all eight holes while changing out a collet in between, which is more efficient, but there's an even more efficient way. Not surprisingly, there have been um, attempts by inventors to solve this problem for the mill, and there are efficiency, there are, what do you call it? 
there are some custom things that have been designed for a Bridgeport mill to handle exactly a, an issue like that. And that is today's show and tell. I know it's a long four and a half minutes before I got to the point, but you know, you clicked on it. You know what we're talking about. We're talking about quick change tool posts today uh, for a manual operated mill. Um, and the one that I want to talk about is right behind me. Uh, this is an R8 quick change tool post, and it is designed and invented, designed and built by Oakland Tool, oh, sorry, Diamond Tool and Die out of Oakland, California. Um, this is called the In Motion Quick Change. I discovered this a couple of years ago, and I bought one last year, and um, frankly, it's been sitting in a box, and I'm very enamored of its possibilities, and I'm going to try out those possibilities today for the first time. Um, so what do I mean by quick change tool post? This has an R8 uh, collet that slips right into the spindle of my mill. So that goes in. Now, I talked about those seven different drill bits. What I would do is I would take a drill bit that I needed, like a center drill, and I would put it in one of the, uh, one of the holders that fits this. So here's how this works. Each of these holders uh, is ground on a taper that matches the taper of the inside of this spindle. There's a little dog in there that catches this lip. And when you put this in, it registers. There is no movement. And this allows me to put a spotting drill in and then pull it out. Then I can put in the uh, number seven drill. Then I can pull it out. Then I can put in the countersink. Then I pull it out. Then I can put in the tap, etc., etc., etc. It should allow me to do eight threaded holes in two, eight threaded holes in one plate and eight through holes in another plate in a fairly short period of time. Um, and I'm kind of excited by that. Um, oh, one thing you should know about a, about a tool like this is that while you can, while you can chuck an end mill into a tool like this, you don't want to. Um, I threw an indicator on this yesterday and it's uh, concentricity to the spindle of the mill is plus or minus about three thousandths, three one thousandths of an inch, um, about 75 microns. Um, that is fine for drilling holes for plate registrations. That is not an unreasonable amount of slop for doing exactly the operation that I'm doing. But you wouldn't want to, like three thousandths here is like five thousandths here, it's 10,000. I mean, like every time, every bit you're extending out, you're increasing that error and you don't want to do that. So doing, dr this is really a, yes, you could put milling bits in this. And if I was milling like ren shape or soft plastic, I might, but for anything else, this is mostly a drilling machine, a drilling operation machine. But um, I managed to purchase, yeah, I managed to purchase this plus a whole crap ton of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chucks, a couple of tapers, and some basic holders. It is a real, a king's ransom of this invention. And I was feeling super optimistic, and I'm like, I'd have my lifetime supply, and never, next time I have to do a set of holes, I'm going to be so happy about it. Well, I am going to drill a set of holes for y'all. And here's hoping I'm really happy about it. All right, right, where do we start? The first way we start is we start actually putting these things that I need into these holders. So uh, here comes, there's a, let's see, that's my center drill. There's one. Um, and let's, uh, we'll line these up on this thing, I think. Let's see here. We got the center drill, then we got a number seven. So we're going to pop that in and tighten it down. All right, that's the number seven. Now we put in the tap, quarter 20. Okay. Then we put in the chamfer. Yep. Then we put in the through drill. Okay, and now we have, that's the countersink for a cap head screw. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Is there anything I'm missing? Center drill, number seven, tap drill, spiral point, chamfer, through drill, that's the second plate, and that. Yeah, I think 
Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, okay. All right, I've got my plate. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap eight holes in here. There we go. Uh, but, ooh, 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 very first, very first, <laughs> I need to, uh, I need to come up with my actual uh, tramming point, which is uh, what my zeros are. So, okay. One zero. And there's my second zero. And that looks absolutely correct. I am just going to line up with the corner here. So now I know what my center is. So now it's time to use the spindle. First, I chuck it into the RA collet. Uh, I have to lower this down in order to accommodate. And then here's how, so this is, that's not the number seven, that's the through drill. Here is the number seven. So I'm going to go through and drill each hole and do all the operations of each hole and hopefully we'll see just how easy it can be with this. All right. It's in. Ah, should I show you from the other angle? I don't want to be in your way while I'm dialing this in, but let's see here. Maybe it's like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, point five, and point five. Okay. So we're now above. Come on. There we go. All right. Here we go. Ooh, wow. I did not mount that correctly. Haha. <laughs> All right, let's get this. Okay. Much better. So, fill the hole. Pop it out. Tap the hole. Chamfer the hole. Start again. Moving on uh, to two. Okay, here we go. Now, tap the hole. Chamfer the hole. All right, now I'm gonna to start to move and I'll do, I'll do a quick procession here. Uh, and we can see another way of doing this because I can drill all the holes, right? So I go to four here.
four, and then five point five. And then three inches. Now I'm going to tap all six of those holes. So, get back and just go in the opposite direction. All right, here we go. Here comes two. down to point five. Look, doing this kind of tapping on the mill takes a touch, it takes a feel, it takes a little bit of experience. Don't consider this a how-to on doing that. But now all the holes are tapped, it's time to champ for them all. So here we go. Number five. Okay. That is eight evenly spaced holes that are all threaded. And that was like less than 10 minutes. That's not bad for three operations. Oh, I forgot to do this, the, the, the center drill. Yeah, I wouldn't. You see where I'm going. I forgot some things. I'm still telling the same story. <laughs> Bear with me. Okay, so I pop this out. And we're gonna put this in for the through drill. And I'm gonna line this up with this back corner. Great. Uh, and now this is a through drill. So we're going to do this. And then one. Uh, yeah. All the way up to. Oh, let's get you some close ups. And one. All right, countersink. Um, this is a countersink bit. Uh, this, where we are, this, can I get focus on it? There we go, no. Come on. There we go. This is a countersink bit. This is a standard bit made for countersinking. A cap-headed Allen bolt. Uh, so I am now going to go through and do eight countersunk, countersunk holes. Put this in here. All oh, right. I want to actually put a stop in. I want to put a stop to this. So uh, bring it up. Five. There we 
kan. Här får du en dörr fram. Oh yeah, I went a little fast, and I got some uh, some uh, plastic swarf spooched in there. Excellent. There we go, and that's the last hole. Um, that was a total of about fifteen minutes to do that, and. Um, Let's go see how it worked. Two, four, six, eight. So this registers to that. Oh, they should line up in their corners. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, perfect. So uh, we're going to start, we're gonna start these. Remember, when you're screwing things together that involve multiple bolts, don't tighten all of them until you, don't tighten any of them until you've gotten them all started. Oop. And there you have it. Diamond Tool and Die out of Oakland, California. They are still around. Uh, they no longer make this product. They now, I believe, have pivoted. Maybe they've been absorbed. I wasn't quite able to figure it out, but they are now a medical equipment manufacturer. Um, I'm not saying this is better than any other way at all. I'm just saying this is a system that intrigued me. When I went and read people's reports about it on The Practical Machinist, it seemed to be positively considered. When I found one on eBay for a deal, um, I managed to pick up a second one for parts, and between those two, I assembled a real king's ransom of like a versatile uh, 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 set of tooling for this. And I think it really can increase what I can do here in the cave. And I love this. I love, like, you know, this is a, probably a 30-year-old piece of technology that, you know, the the, uh, the grinding is just perfect. It's still in fantastic shape. Um, and there are, like, there are, I think there are many different, or maybe three or four, I don't know, in America, maybe there's all over the world, there's a dozen different versions of solving this same problem. Um, I just love the idea of someone going to work in Oakland and like figuring out how to make this a much easier task for people. Um, and look, doing this is, it's not hard, but boy, is it tedious. This under normal circumstances would have taken me well over an hour to do on the mill uh, with all the collet changing. It would be adding a whole bunch of time. And I appreciate, I appreciate efficiencies where I can find them. And I think this is going to be a good addition to my tool kit. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. <coughs> thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Um, if you have other mill efficiency machines that, that help that kind of thing, you know, I've got indexing heads and uh, rotary tables and fixture plates and stuff like that for the mill. Um, but I'm particularly fascinated by people who decided to try and uh, jumpstart an entirely new standard for a, a, a tool, like a brand new, this, this is not a small swing. When you think about the mind of the person that came up with this, and then you think that they were like, mm, I wonder if I could do blah, 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 blah. What is it gonna take? Then there's all the tooling, right? 
years, hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably millions of dollars to develop this, to manufacture it, to make everything, to harden it, to grind it, to make it all fit perfectly, the QC, the, the tolerances are probably surpassingly small. All of that for this thing that nobody makes anymore and almost nobody uses, you gotta find it on eBay to make it work again. And I like, I like making it work again. It, I, it, it, I've talked in the past about how, like when I replicated Stanley Kubrick's director's chair, I don't think we covered that on the, on the channel, but when I replicated Stanley Kubrick's director's chair, I found <clears throat> in having to take apart the pieces that I did to put it back together, I ended up creating witness marks on the piece that I recognized from the real one. Like I was walking in the same footsteps as the original craftsperson that Stanley asked to put two bins on either side of his director's chair. And then by the same token, when I, when I incorporate something like this, and I'm able to buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Jacob's Chucks, this is great, a great purchase. I think I paid about 800 bucks for the totality of all this, including one speed truck. Um, when I incorporate a tool like this into my flow, it also feels like that kind of continuum. And I love the fact that it's Oakland, uh, sorry, diamond tool and die out of Oakland, California. It's local, local engineering, local invention, uh, local execution of a wonderful invention that I'm really happy to have in the cave. Um, I've made this handy carrier. I, I am a late life convert to one inch thick plywood. Um, I know I bellyache a lot about how much I love my Baltic birch ply because I'm a real plywood snob, but you can build so much with the hardware store basic like crap lumberyard one inch plywood because of its uh, monolithic nature and because of how strong it is. Uh, I build a lot of stuff out of it and it, uh, I haven't had anything fail on me yet. I keep trying to wrap this up and I keep having some more to say, but I think I'm pretty much there. Okay, thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Uh, if you know of other solutions like this, I would love to know about them. Uh, so let me know in the comments. And uh, if you'd like to become a tested patron and know how to support us better, that's also in the comments. And uh, I will see you next time. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. One of the things I love about this channel is that we don't make how-to videos so much as we make what happened videos. And what almost always happens are mistakes and screw-ups. In fact, they're completely integral to making and honestly to being a person. And to celebrate this, Tested has a new batch of demerit badges for the screw-ups you will encounter in the shop. From left to right, we have touching your paint job, assembling things backwards, losing a tiny screw or part, gluing your fingers together, and smashing your thumb. And frankly, if you haven't done both of these, even if you're not a maker, I just don't feel like you've experienced enough of the world. I'm not saying get out a hammer and smash your thumb, but I will tell you that the blacker your fingernail after the injury, the less it's gonna hurt in the long run. I almost forgot, these make excellent additions to your shop apron and they are available at tested-store.com.